Okay, uh, I had a student come to me at the end of the lecture today uh, asking me to clarify uh, some of the terms um, that we did look at in the lab uh, a couple of weeks ago uh, to do with longitudinal st static stability of aircraft. So things like neutral point, um, aerodynamic centre and so on and what the differences between them are. Um, now this should all go back to uh, your flight mechanics course uh, in, in the second year, um, but I'll do a quick revision uh, video here. Uh, to clarify things. So, if we're thinking about the longitudinal static stability of an aircraft, we're thinking about the motion of the aircraft in the pitching plane. Um, so in this sense here, where the aircraft is going nose up, nose down, about the centre of gravity. Um, and we'll define a positive moment, or a positive moment coefficient, Cm, um, in the clockwise sense as we look at this particular aircraft here. So, so pitch, pitch up is a positive moment. Now, of course, uh, the wings are generating lift. There's a, an mg force here. So for a typical aircraft configuration, the tailplane is generating down force to balance the lift and the, uh, the gravity load. Um, to keep this aircraft in equilibrium. So let's just have a think about equi the different types of equilibria that exist. And very simply, we can break uh, the different types of equilibria that exist down into three categories. First of all, we can think about stable equilibria. And the, the classic analogy here is a ball at the bottom of a valley. Um, it's in equilibrium, and if you perturb that ball from its equilibrium position so that it moves either to the left or to the right up the valley sides, the system itself will naturally want to return that ball back down to its original state. So we refer, we refer to this as a stable equilibrium. On the opposite hand, we could have an equilibrium condition where you have a ball resting at the top of a mountain. Now, of course, that ball could sit there in equilibrium, but as soon as it's perturbed from equilibrium, it will shoot off down the valley sides, and there's nothing in that system that wants to, to push that ball back. So this is an unstable system. There's a, there's a third case where you've got a ball on a flat surface. Now again, that ball can exist there in equilibrium, but if it's perturbed, if a little force pushes that ball and gives it some speed, there's nothing that wants to return that force, that ball, uh, back to where it came from. But equally, there's nothing actually forcing it away from that position. So we would call this neutral stability. So when we come on to that term a little bit later on, uh, that's what we're talking about. Uh, so that's neutral stability in the middle. So what do these three different types of equilibrium look like, equilibria look like, in the context of an aircraft? Well, we think about static stability of an aircraft in the longitudinal uh, axis. Um, by considering what happens to the moment coefficient as alpha, the angle of attack of the aircraft, varies. So in the stable case, if we plot Cm against alpha, we might have a situation like this. Where in equilibrium, where, s where the moment coefficient is zero at some finite angle of attack, what this shows us is that with a Cm against alpha variation that looks like this, as you increase alpha, you reduce Cm. Cm becomes negative, so there's a restoring force. On the other side, we have Cm against alpha, and it looked like this. Well, here there may well again be in equilibrium position, a, a, an, an angle of attack at which Cm is equal to zero, so the, so the aircraft is in equilibrium. But in this case, if you increase the angle of attack, you increase Cm, and that disturbance will tend to want to increase. So this is the unstable case. And in the middle, 
neutral stability would look something like this. So in this case, we might have something like that. We're at the point where the aircraft is stable and CM is zero. There are a range of angles of attack that give you uh, a CM of zero. So actually nudging it one side or the other um, doesn't actually affect CM. CM stays at zero even if alpha is nudged um, up or down. So it turns out that the condition we require for our aircraft to be stable is that the derivative of CM with respect to alpha must be less than zero. And when it is zero, you've got neutral stability. The question then, I guess, is, well, that's a simple inequality condition. How big do you want that DCM by the alpha term to be? And of course, the size of that DCM by the alpha term will affect the kind of characteristics of your aircraft. Let's forget about aircraft just for a minute, and we'll think about um, we'll just think about an aerofoil on its own. Um, and we need to do this to understand the difference between some of these terms that get banded around when we're talking about aircraft stability. Um, so let's first of all consider a symmetric aerofoil. I'll do my best on this new tablet of mine to draw. Well, that's supposed to be symmetric. Uh, I can it isn't, but uh, now on a symmetric aerofoil, typically uh, the centre of pressure, and we'll define what we mean by centre of pressure in just a moment, sits at about the quarter chord position. So if this symmetric aerofoil has chord length C, and the centre of pressure sits at around about C upon 4, and it doesn't move from there. Um, at different angles of attack, the central pressure will sit roughly stable there um, at the central pressure. So for a symmetric aerofoil, it would kind of make sense, given that the definition of central pressure is the point about which CM is 0. So this is, if you want to define the central pressure, this is the point about which CM equals zero, um, and it's quite it's, that's just a nice simple definition. So um, when CL is equal to zero, if we choose to always take our moments about the centre of pressure, uh, CM is equal to zero. Um, so for a symmetric airfoil, it kind of makes sense to be taking your moments about this quarter chord position, the centre of pressure where the, the moment coefficient is also zero. But as soon as we have a cambered aerofoil, which is usually the case on aircraft, for the main wing section, certainly. So this is going to be... Uh, an aerofoil section that has some camber on it. Obviously, I've exaggerated this. Um, well, then the centre of pressure drifts. So there's no fixed centre of pressure position. As the angle of attack increases, the centre of pressure might drift towards the leading edge. Now, at a CL of zero, now, depending on where we choose to take our moments, the, cent the, the moment coefficient might not necessarily be zero because uh, because that central pressure position is moving, um, there's no obvious place about which to, to, to measure the moment. Um, but if you, if you fix it at arbitrarily, say, the quarter chord position, um, there's no reason why at CL0 the, the moment coefficient about that point would be zero, which of course implies that the, the distance to the center of pressure at CL0 actually has gone off to infinity. So because of this problem of a drifting center of pressure when you have a cambered aerofoil, we introduce the concept of the aerodynamic center, which is different to the center of pressure. And the aerodynamic center 
has this subtly different definition. Now this is the point about which the CM by the alpha equals zero. So it's the point about which the, the moment coefficient isn't changing. It's not the point about which the moment coefficient is zero. And this will be a fixed point on the arrow point. So we can find this point and use and use this point about which to, to measure moments because it's a fixed it's a fixed point on the aerofoil. Um, we now have this uh, term that we talk about the static margin. And once we understand what the aerodynamic center is and the difference between the step the, the aerodynamic center and the center of pressure. Well, this is a simple algebraic definition. The static margin of an aircraft is the x coordinate. We're measuring x from the leading edge of our aircraft. This is the x coordinate up here. Uh, so the x coordinate of the aerodynamic center minus the x coordinate of the center of gravity uh, divided by typically we would normalize it by the chord of the aircraft. Okay, so if we're just looking at an aerofoil or a wing, um, this is our simple static margin definition. Worth pointing out uh, at this point that, of course, for a symmetric aerofoil, because the centre of pressure isn't drifting at all, um, and by definition the centre of pressure is is uh, the point about which CM equals zero. The center of pressure and the aerodynamic center um, are coincident. Um, and the center of pressure is the point about which uh, CM isn't changing. DCM by the alpha is zero, as is uh, CM. But of course, for an aircraft, an aircraft isn't just, doesn't fly. Its equilibrium position um, can't exist without a tail point, because typically we would have for an aircraft a center of gravity uh, ahead of the wing. This is our main wing. And we also have a tail plane at the back of the aircraft. So we've got, as we said earlier, gravity pulling down, the lift on the main wing pulling up, and some downforce being generated on the tail plane. Now, this is where we introduce the concept of the neutral plane. The neutral point is the, the furthest distance rearward that the aerodynamic center, or sorry, that the center of gravity can drift on an aircraft whilst maintaining static stability when you're including the effect of the tail okay. So if we could allow this center of, uh, the center of gravity to drift to this position here, And we still have a positive static margin. Well, at, this, at this limit, the static margin is to zero. Um, then this is this is the neutral point. Okay, so the neutral point this rearward position that the CG can drift whilst maintaining stability. So in the limit, if you push the centre of gravity all the way to the neutral point, what you've got is the aircraft exit flying in straight and level flight in equilibrium um, with neutral stability. There's nothing um, that's going to force that aircraft uh, to go back to its equilibrium position if it's disturbed from that position. Um, so when we're talking about the neutral point, we're talking about the entire aircraft configuration. We're not just looking at a wing in isolation. We're talking about the entire aircraft configuration. 
Um, and again, that subtle difference is what confuses people, I guess, between where, where the aerodynamic centre is on an airfoil um, and where the neutral point is for an entire aircraft. Um, so hopefully that is useful.